Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning, the Most High, we get up to say Shema. Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akha. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And bless your name.
this morning, the Most High. We get up this morning seeking Him first. The kingdom of the Most High God and all His righteousness. Knowing that all things shall be added unto us. Therefore, we come seeking, asking, and knocking. Asking the Most High right now for revelation. Because revelation precedes deliverance. And we want to get delivered out of some foolishness. Out of some pagan idolatry worship. The traditions of men. I'm talking about things we've been celebrating. When the Most High God says, do not do as the heathens do. When the Most High God says, come on now. You cannot do the same things as the world. You may be in this world, but you're not of this world. But you want to know something? We are the light of the world, and it's time to light some things up. Come on now. He said, let there be light, and there was light. So we come to turn on the Hanukkah lights and to dim the lights on Christmas. Hallelujah, and bless your name. Because what does light have to do with darkness? We come to separate some things. We're separating the wheat from the tail and the sheep from the goat. The unclean from the clean and the holy from the unholy. I'm talking about the most high God. We can't make him common. We can't make him profane. We can't just put him any or where we want to put him and then say, Jesus is the reason for the season. That's what we say. Oh, no, it's not about the trees. Jesus is the reason for the season. Well, you can't take a Hebrew speaking God and put him in Christmas anyway. You can't take a Hebrew speaking God and add him to Christianity. Our problem is we want to make that thing fit. We want to take like a, a square and try to put that thing in a triangle spot. You can't do that. It won't fit. So we come to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me the most high God. So this morning, we're going to talk about Christmas and where it really originated. We're going to talk about the truth. Because I'm telling you right now, we've been doing some pagan idolatry worship. And if we don't study out the origin of a thing, where that thing started at, we're going to be keep on worshiping these pagan gods and just keep handing it down to our children and our children's children. If we do not stop just saying, you know, this is the way we've always done it. I don't understand. The most high God knows our heart. This is the way we always done it. So if I've always celebrated Christmas, what is the problem? And I know it's not about the trees and all that kind of stuff, but you're still doing something that the most high God said to not to. So this morning. We're coming for your Christmas tree, your mistletoes, your wreaths. We're coming for it all this morning. We're coming for it all the way up until we begin to celebrate Hanukkah starting December the 23rd, going through December the 30th. And we're going to have a head-on collision with Christmas this year. Because Christmas is going to fall right there in the middle in Hanukkah. We start December 23rd. Christmas is December the 25th. We're going to have a head-on collision. It's time for the truth. I'm sorry. It's time for the truth. We got to stop walking in lies. For surely we have inherited our forefathers' lies. Oh, Hasatan told the very first lie. He is the father of lies. And we just keep walking in lies. We don't care about it. We don't care about walking in a lie. But the Most High God said, no. No. I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I change not. You better read, Jeremiah, about your Christmas trees. Y'all better know what truth is. And right now, you're being held accountable. Welcome to 5 a.m. prayer, where they hold you accountable for your Christmas tree. So we need to get some things straight. The word says, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I act as a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. So it's time to put away the childish things and move on to perfection. Come on now. Truth brings perfection now. It'll straighten some things out in your life like that plumb line. It will straighten things out in your life. So come on in here, April 
for the truth. Because we don't believe in celebrating no Christmas. How are we going to celebrate something that the Most High God did not even have anything to do with? But we said, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. You ain't following the Mashiach. The Mashiach ain't never put up no Christmas tree. Right. The Mashiach ain't never celebrated no Christmas talk about he was born on December 25th. No. That's what we're not going to do. Hallelujah. And bless his name this morning. We come for the truth. I don't know why. And sometimes we can hear the truth and still go out there and buy a Christmas tree, drag it in and put it up. Keep on doing what we're doing. But we're like, ooh, we, that was a good word. And I know it was the truth, too. But, uh, girl, no, I'm going to get my tree today. I hear Dr. J, but I'm going to get my tree today. It is December the 3rd, right? Mm -hmm. You know, y'all counting up. Well, I'm sorry, counting down because, you know, Hebrews, we count up. When we count up in expectations, y'all counting down like, oh, Lord, it's the countdown. Christmas is almost here. We got like three weeks till Christmas. No, we got about three weeks to Hanukkah. Like I said, Hanukkah starts December the 23rd through December the 30th. So we're going to celebrate the days that the Most High God tell us to celebrate. If we look at Leviticus chapter 23, it tells about all his feast days and the days we should be celebrating. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, man decided, I'm going to make up my own holidays and get away from the holy days. Right. you always been given a counterfeit. You didn't know. The Most High said Sabbath, Saturday. You said no Sunday. The Most High said Hanukkah. You said no Christmas. The Most High said Passover. You said no Easter. You always do the opposite of what the Most High God tell you to do. Just disobedient, stiff-necked folks. We're supposed to learn from the children of Israel. We ain't learned none yet. It said Israel was our example, huh? Oh, you done disconnected from Israel. You don't even know you're Israel. So, I mean, you wouldn't know that. But I love what uh, Pastor Keith Wilkinson said on yesterday. He said, what does a Hebrew Messiah have to do with Christianity? Huh. And let me prove it to you. Because <laughs> a Hebrew-speaking God ain't got nothing to do with Christianity. And you got to understand that Christianity came way after <laughs> The most high God. So just, just knowing scripture, you should know it's a lie. Oh, but it don't matter. I don't know why. It, it just doesn't matter. The Lord knows my heart. So we're going to celebrate what we want to celebrate. And we're going to do what we want to do. Because we separated ourselves from the most high God. We became independent instead of dependent on him. That's the problem. We're so independent that we can't depend on the Most High God. So I'm thankful this morning that the Most High God come to tear down every Christmas tree, every wreath, every mistletoe, every chestnut roasting on an open fire. He come to get it this morning. So I'm thankful for who the Most High God is. Ooh, I'm so excited about this teaching. Y'all come on in here this morning. Start sharing this video right now because you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Ooh, Most High. I'm thankful. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. The ones that will listen live and the ones that will listen later. Let them know right now. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And when Yeshua sat down with the Talmudines, he began to open their understanding. The word of the Most High God says, through all your getting. Get an understanding. I ask you to decrease me right now. And as you give the increase, I'm not sufficient of myself. All sufficiency lies on the inside of you. I'm thankful right now for your word that's coming forth this morning. Because your word does not return void. Neither shall it be reversed. And it will do exactly what you're sent it to do. So send your word, most high God. Giving you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. It's the third day, y'all. And the Most High God, come on, Sherry. And the Most High God is coming with some divine intervention. Because three is the number of divine intervention. So now, are you ready? For the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac.
Isaac, the father of Jacob. Are you ready for the word of God? The father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. This morning, we are coming out of the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 15 in its entirety. Okay, this morning, we are coming out of the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 15 in its entirety, and it reads, Then came to Yeshua scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, why do thou, Talmudim, transgress the tradition of the elders? Huh. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of the Most High God by your traditions? <laughs> For the Most High God commanded, saying, Order thou father and mother, and, and he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And order not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus, have ye made the commandments of the Most High God of none effect by your tradition? Come on, Christmas. Ye hypocrites. Well did Eliza prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and heart of me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me Teaching the doctrines, the commandments of men. Uh-oh. And he called the multitudes and said unto them, Hear and understand. Through all your getting, get an understanding. Which is Yeshua. And he called the multitudes and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth to fight a man, but that which cometh out of his mouth, this defieth a man. Then came his Talmudines and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended? Who cares? After they heard this saying, Do you know, Dr. J, you offending them right now because you trying to take their Christmas tree? Who cares? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Abba has not planted, shall be rooted up. Dr. J, could you read that again with your emphasis added? Okay. But he answered and said, every Christmas tree, which my heavenly Abba has not planted, shall be rooted up. That's my emphasis added, Most High. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. What you say? Say it again. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leave the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Oh, Lord. I think this is enough for Christmas right here. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Rabbi Ralph Messer was teaching on par parables on Sabbath. What you say? Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. Uh -huh. And Yeshua said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Uh -huh. What you say, Yeshua? And Yeshua said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do ye? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever enters in a man's mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drop. But those things which proceeded out of the mouth comes forth from the heart and they defile the man. Ooh, come on now. 
For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murderers, adulterers, fornication, theft, false witnesses, blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Then Yeshua went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his Talmudines came and besought him, saying, Send her away. For she cries after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He done disconnected from Israel. You don't even know he was sent for you. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread. And to cast it to the dogs. Oh, Lord. Mm. And she said. Truth. Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs. Which fall from their master's table. Huh. Then Yeshua answered and said unto her. O oh, woman. Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee. Even as thou will. And her daughter was made whole. From that very hour. Yes, yes. And Yeshua departed. From thence and came nine unto the sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Yeshua's feet. And he healed them. In so much that the multitude wondered. When they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Then Yeshua called his Talmudians unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. And his disciples said unto him, when should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Yeshua said unto them, how many loaves has ye? And they said, seven and a few little fish. How many loaves they had? Seven and a few little fish. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and break them and gave to his disciples and the Talmudines to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled and they took up of the broken meat. All right. That was left seven baskets full. And they that did eat were 4,000 men besides women and children, and he sent away the multitude and took ship and came into the coast of Magdalat. May the Most High God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. The true origin of Christmas. Come on in here this morning. Come on in here. The true origin of Christmas. Where did Christmas originate? From the Bible or paganism? Oh, come on now. Come on. I, I, I need y'all to talk to me this morning. The origins of Christmas. Where did Christmas originate? From the Bible or paganism? What is the real origin of Santa Claus, uh -huh. the mistletoe, the Christmas tree, the holy wreath, and the customs of exchanging gifts? Mm -hmm. Many are concerned about putting Christ back into Christmas. Mm -hmm. 
Was he ever there? Huh? Many are concerned about putting Christ back into Christmas. Was he ever there? Here are the stunning answers. Y'all better come on and go with me this morning. Here are the stunning answers. Every year after Thanksgiving, most people's thoughts turn to Christmas. You know it's the truth. Every year after Thanksgiving, most people's thoughts turn to Christmas. It is a time when professing Christians are supposed to focus on Jesus Christ. After all, it is the Christ Mass season. After all, it is the Christ mass season. Christmas is thought by most to be a wonderful time, focusing the participants on giving, family togetherness, beautiful music and decorations, feasting on special foods, and singing Christmas carols throughout the neighborhood. All of this is supposedly centered around the worship of Christ. Yes. Surely the Bible instructs us to do all this, right? <laughs> the answers will shock you. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. The answers will shock you. Why do people think that Christmas is wonderful? Why y'all think that? Why do people think Christmas is wonderful? Most never reflect on why they believe what they believe or do what they do. Why you believe in Christmas? Why you believe in it? Oh, that's what, you know, my grandmama told me my mama's mama's and, you know, it's just been handed down traditions. We live in a world filled with customs, but few ever seek to understand their origins. Oh, come on now. We live in a world filled with customs. Yeah. But few ever seek to understand their origin. We generally accept them without questions. Huh? We generally accept them without question. Most people basically do what Everyone else does. You know it's the truth. Y'all better come on in here this morning. Most people basically do what everyone else does. Because it is easy and natural. We don't want to go against the grain. Let's carefully examine the roots of Christmas. Let's look at why people follow the customs associated with it. Why is it kept on December 25th? Did the early New Testament church keep it? Oh, we got some questions this morning. Did the early New Testament church keep it? Okay. We are going to come with some facts from history that... When placed together, paint a complete picture. Let's avoid all assumptions and only accept what can be proven. Yes. So we're going to paint a picture. Uh -huh. It's going to be filled with facts from the history that when we place it together, it's going to paint a complete picture. Yes. Right. Let's avoid all assumptions and only accept what can be proven. Pagan origin. What you say, Dr. J? Pagan origin. Now, I'm going to give you an example of something. Because, see, we got to prove this thing. We really got to prove it. And it's always by a court study. Do you understand that everything the most high God does, he does it by his law? Yes. So when somebody wants to prove something, they're going to take you to court. Yeah, so we come to take you to court this morning. By the way, in 1990, 
in Ohio, a little Cleveland suburb, the school board banned all nativity and other Christmas scenes on any school property because they felt it violated the separation of church and state. They were challenged in court when outraged parents opposed them, feeling that Christmas was being stolen from their children and the community. The board lost the case. What you say? The board lost the case. The seminary had contended that Christmas was a worldwide tradition that was not a part of and transcended religion. Uh-oh, y'all better come on in here. Yeah. It deemed to be secular, mm -hmm. a part of virtually all cultures, cultures worldwide. The court's decision affirm that Christmas has no Christian roots. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That's what the court said about Christmas. Come on now, prove your case, Dr. J. The court decision affirmed that Christmas has no Christian roots. However, the court's opinion also noted that the Bible reading and prayer obviously are associated with Christ's anity. Oh. A remarkable omission. The courts concluded that Christmas keeping and the manger scenes could remain because they are not really a part of either Christianity or religion. <laughs> but prayer and Bible reading, which are, must remain excluded from the schools. Oh, we gonna let in your pagan idolatry worship, but the Bible, come on now, and prayer can't come into the school. Who oh Lord? Nearly all aspects of Christmas observed have their roots in Roman customs and religion. Come on, Pastor Wilkins. Nearly all aspects of Christmas have their roots in Roman custom and religion. Yeah. Consider the following omission from a large American newspaper, the Buffalo News, November the 22nd, 1984. Right. I said 1984. Okay. The earliest reference to Christmas being marked on December 25th comes from the second century after Jesus' birth. Huh? huh? Wait, hold on now. Y'all said he was born on Christmas. This said uh, the first celebration <laughs> uh, of December 25th comes from the second century after Jesus' birth. Yeah. It is considered likely the first Christmas celebrations were in reaction to the Roman Centennia, a harvest festival that marked the winter solace, yeah, right. the return of the sun, and honored, and honored Saturn, the god of sowing. Ooh, what god y'all serving? Come on now. Saturnalia was a rowdy time. Much opposed by the more astral leaders among the still minority Christian sect. Hmm. Okay. Christmas developed, what scholar says, as a means of replacing worship of the sun with worship of the sun. Huh? Hmm. One scholar said, a means of replacing worship of the S-U-N uh -huh. with worship of the S-O-N. Okay. You better be careful because what they will do is sneak these things in on you. Right. And you don't even know what you're celebrating. But you're putting Christ in Christmas. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. Hmm. So, <clears throat> by 529 AD, after Christianity 
had become the official state religion of the Roman Empire, Emperor, Emperor Justin made Christmas a civic holiday. What you say? What you say? The celebration of Christmas reached its peak. Some would say its worst moments in the medieval period when it became a time of conspicuous consumption and unequal robbery. Uh -huh. Consider these quotes from the Catholic Encyclopedia, the 1911 edition under Christmas. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Consider these quotes from the Catholic Encyclopedia, 1911 edition under Christmas. Okay, right. Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. Mm -hmm. Huh? What you say? Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. Uh -huh. The first evidence of the feast is from Egypt. Further, pagan customs centering around the January calendars gravitated to Christmas. Okay. Under NATO Day origin, an early Catholic writer admitted in the scriptures, no one is recorded to have kept a feast or held a great banquet on his birthday. Huh? Huh? It is only sinners like Pharaoh and Herod who make great rejoicings over the day in which they were born yeah. into this world. Oh. So the Encyclopedia Americana in 1956 edition adds, Christmas was not observed in the first century of the Christian church since the Christian uses in general was to celebrate the death of remarkable persons rather than their birth. A feast was established in memory of this event, Christ's birth, in the fourth century. In the 5th century, the Western Church ordered the feast to be celebrated forever on the day of the merit rites of the birth of the Son. And at the close of the Saturnalia, as no certain knowledge of the day of Christ's birth existed. What y'all doing? What y'all doing? Because he the reason for the season. That's what y'all said. There is no mistaking the origin of the modern Christmas celebration. Many additional sources can be cited and will return to this later. Let's begin to tie some other facts together. Let's begin to tie some other facts together. It was 300 years the Christ uh -huh. before the Roman church kept Christmas. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I, I think y'all done been handed down the traditions of men because y'all keep their commandments, as uh, Yeshua said in Matthew chapter 15 this morning. <laughs> I'm gonna let the word speak. It was 300 years after Christ before the Roman church kept Christmas. And not until the 5th century that it was mandated to be kept throughout the empire as an official festival of honoring Christ. Hmm. All right. Can Christ be honored by Christmas? Hmm. That's a question. Can Christ be honored by Christmas? The most common justification that one will hear regarding Christmas is that people has replaced old pagan customs and intents by asserting that they are now focusing on Christ. Huh? huh? Come on in here now. The most common justification, you know you do it, 
that one will hear regarding Christmas is that people have replaced old pagan customs and intents by asserting that they are now focusing on Christ. I have heard many say that they are honoring Christ in their Christmas keeping. The problem is that the Most High God does not say this is acceptable to him. What you say, Dr. J? The problem is, is that the Most High God does not say this is acceptable to him. Actually, he plainly commands against keeping it. What you say? Actually, he plainly commands against keeping it. Keeping Christmas disorders Mashiach. He considers everything about it to be an abomination. What you say? He considers everything about it to be an abomination. And we will soon see why. Come on now. Christ Mashiach said. Come on now. Mashiach said. But in vain. They do worship me. Teaching for doctrines. The commandments of men. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, this is Yeshua saying this. This ain't me saying this. This ain't even the study saying this. I'm going to let the scripture speak to you. Ha. Mashiach said, but in vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Matthew chapter 15 verse 9. Christmas is not a command of the most high God. It is a tradition of men. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. I'm going to say it again. Christmas is not a command of the most high God. It is a tradition of men. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Mashiach continued, come on, Yeshua, full well, you reject the commandment of the Most High God that you may keep your own tradition. That's Mark chapter 7, verse 9. Come on, Scripture. Oh, and it's the New Testament, just in case you didn't know, because y'all don't threw out the law. This is the uh, word made flesh. No longer on tablets of stone, okay. but on tablets of flesh. Yeah. Come on, Yeshua. Mashiach continued. Yes. Full well, you reject the commandment of the Most High God that you may keep your own tradition. Huh. Mark chapter 7, verse 9. Every year throughout the world, on December 25th, Hundreds of millions do just that. We will see that the Most High God plainly commands, follow not the way of the heathens. Huh? We will see that the Most High God plainly commands, follow not the way of the heathens. But most people... Do not fear the most high God. And he allows them to make their own decisions. Oh, Lord. Okay. Human beings are free mortal, moral agents. Free to obey or disobey the most high God. But woe to those who ignore the plain word of the most high God. Was. Christ born on December 25th. Hold on. Come on now. I feel like an attorney this morning. We going to court. Yes. Because you're going to know the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Okay. 
So help me the most high God. Was Christ born on December 25th? Christ was born in the fall of the year. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Christ was born in the fall of the year. Many have mistakenly believed he was born around the beginning of winter. Ah, <laughs> ah. December 25th. They are wrong. What you say, Dr. J? They are wrong. Notice the Adam Clark Commentary, Volume 5, page 370 in the New York edition. Okay. It was custom mm -hmm. among the Hebrews uh -oh. to send out their sheep to the desert about Passover. Early spring and bring them home at the commencement of the first rain. Yes. The first rain begins in early to mid fall. Continuing with this same quote, during the time they were out, the shepherds watched them night and day. Yes. As the first rain began early in the month of March, even, which answers to the part of our October, November begins sometime in October. We find that the sheep were kept out in the open country during the whole summer. And as these shepherds had not yet brought home their flocks, it is presumptive argument that October had not yet commenced and that consequently our Mashiach was not born on the 25th of December when no flocks were out in the field. How can the shepherds be tending their flock on December 25th? Nor could he have been born later than September as the flocks were still in the fields by night. Oh, Lord. Yes. On this very ground, the nativity in December should be given up. <laughs> the feeding of the flocks by night in the fields is a chronological fact. See the quotation from the Tamu and Lightfoot. Uh -huh. So in Luke chapter 2 verse 8 explains that when Mashiach was born, they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Yeah. Note that they were abiding in the field. Yes. This never happens in December. Yes. What you say? Oh, I came to take the scales off your eyes. Come on now. Come on now. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Notice they were abiding in the field. Okay. Both Ezra uh -huh. chapter 10 Verse 9 through 13. And the songs of Solomon. Chapter 2. Verse 11. Shows that winter was the rainy season. Huh? And shepherds could not stay on cold open field at night. Oh, come on now. Yes. Numerous encyclopedias explain plainly state that Mashiach was not born on December 25th. Huh? huh? Oh, for surely you have inherited your forefather's lies. Oh, Lord. Come, on Come on, Jeremiah. For surely you have inherited your forefather's lies. Numerous See, the problem is, like Pastor Keith Wilkins says, y'all won't do y'all history. Y'all won't study. Huh. You got to study the history of a thing. Yeah. 
Come on, both high God. Numerous encyclopedias state that Christ was not born on December 25th. The Catholic encyclopedia yeah. directly confirms this. What you say? The Catholic encyclopedia directly confirms this. In all likelihood, Christ was born in the fall. Ooh, where your Christmas tree at now? Where is your Christmas tree? In all likelihood, Christ was born in the fall. Yeah. A lengthy technical examination would prove this point. Ooh, this is so good. Yes. Since we know that December 25th was nowhere near Mashiach's actual birth date, where did the festival associated with this day come from? Oh. Now, read this quote. Okay. Christmas in the Roman world. The Saturnalia, December 17th, was a time of merrymaking and exchanging gifts. Uh-oh. December 25th was also regarded as the birth date of the Iranian mystery god Mura, the son of righteousness. Yeah. On the Roman New Year, January the 1st, mm -hmm. houses were decorated with greenery and lights uh -huh. and gifts were given to children and the poor. Okay. To these observances were added the German and Celtic youth rites when the Tonic tribes penetrated into Gaul, Britain, and certain in Central Europe. Food and good fellowship, the Yule log and Yule cakes, greenery and farm trees, gifts and greetings, all commemorated directly aspect of this festive season. Okay. Fires and lights, symbols of warmth and lasting life, have always been associated with the winter festival. Both pagan and Christian. What you say, most high God? Both pagan and Christian. Yes. A final quote about the section of December 25th as the birth date of Christ is necessary. Note an article in the Toronto Star, December 1984, yes. by Alan Edmonds, Entitled, We Owe a Lot to Drews in Dutch. The Reformation cast a blight on Christmas. By then, of course, clever East Church politicians had adopted the pagan midwinter festival as the alleged birth date of Jesus of Nazareth and thrown in a few other pagan goodies to make their turnover more palatable. Oh, That's the reason why you better know you serve a Hebrew speaking God, yes. the Most High, and Yeshua. Because you can't trust the Jesus that they gave you. Uh-oh, we going into some deep waters now, April. You can't trust handed down religion because the most high God did not create religion. Pagan idolatry worship. December 25th was not selected because it was the birth of Christ. Or because it was even near it. It was selected because it coincided 
with the idolatry pagan festival sanitaria. And this celebration can be fully and carefully examined. In any event, we do not know the exact date of Christ's birth. While the Most High God certainly could have made it known, yes. he chose to hide it from the world's eyes. Oh, Lord. What about Santa Claus? What you say? What about Santa Claus? Parents reason they owe the whole Christmas myth to their children. Christmas traditions are focused primarily on kids and they are certainly the center of most of what happens. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I know because of the 17, you know, Christmas masses. Yeah. You know, a lot of people that grew up Catholic, they were recipients of much and the givers of very little on that day. And it started with the Santa Claus lie. Huh. Some years ago, a priest in New Jersey told his Sunday school class that Santa was a myth. The outrage from parents oh, and supervisors were swift. He had killed Santa. Uh -oh. He had destroyed family tradition. He had upset family authority. The article continued. He was officially censored by superiors for being overzealous and insensitive. Uh -huh. They done took them kids Santa Claus. His crime, guess what his crime was? He told the truth. Yep. <laughs> According to Langer's Encyclopedia of the World, the article on Santa, Santa was a common name from Nimrod huh. throughout Asian Minor. Ooh, y'all better come on and know your history. According to Landers, Encyclopedia of the World History, on an article on Santa, all this information, all you have to do is go do your research. Santa was a common name for Nimrod throughout Asian Minor. Yeah. This was also the same fire god who came down the chimneys of the ancient pagans and the same fire god to whom infants were burned and eaten in human sacrifice among those who were once the most high god's people. What are we doing? What are we celebrating? Oh, Lord. Today, Santa Claus comes from St. Nicholas. Washington Ivy in 1809 is responsible for remaking the original old stern bishop of the same name into the new name Jolly St. Nick. Y'all better watch the names. All they doing is changing the names on y'all. Yes. It's the same pagan God changing his name. Hmm. They called him jolly old Saint Nix. Hmm. In his Kickerbocker history of New York. Most of the rest of American Christmas traditions are even more recent than this. Yeah. Oh, Nick has long been recognized as a term for the devil. Uh-oh. Look at Santa Claus. Look at Santa Claus. Look at Santa Claus. Spell it. Because it spells Satan. Uh oh Oh, Nick has long been recognized as a term for the devil. In Revelations, mm -hmm. chapter 2, verse 6, and verse 15, we read about a doctrine, oh Lord, of the Nicolettes. Oh, St. Nick, what you say? Yeah, yeah. In Revelations uh -huh. chapter 2, verse 6 and verse 15, 
we read about a doctrine of the Nicolaites, which Christ twice tells his church he hates. Y'all better come on now. Let's analyze the word Nicolette. It means followers of Nicholas. What are we doing? It means followers of Nicholas. Nicole's means conqueror, mm -hmm. destroyer. Laura's means people. Mm -hmm. Nicolaitans then are people who follow the conqueror or destroyer Nimrod. What you say? Oh. You've been following Nimrod. If you have believed that following Christmas is an innocent Christian custom, let that truth sink in. Huh? huh? Wow. If you believed that following Christmas is an innocent Christian custom, let this truth sink in. Is it scriptural to exchange gifts? Oh, Lord. Is it scriptural huh? to exchange gifts? You got that right, April. This is scary. Yes. Merchants regularly report that over 60% of their annual retail sales occurs during Christmas shopping season. Oh, come on, Black Friday shoppers. Merchants regularly report that 60% of their annual retail sales occur during the Christmas shopping season. Yeah. This represents a tremendous amount of gift buying. Most people believe that gift giving comes from the Bible. Example of the three wise men. The Bible gives no number. Presenting gifts to Mashiach. Is this true? Where did exchanging gifts come from? And what does the Most High God's Word say about it? The Benetonica sacred states. The interchange of presence between friends is like characteristics of Christmas and the Sanitanian. And must have been adopted by Christians from the pagans. Uh -oh. As the admiration of Tertullian plainly shows in volume 12 on page 153 through 155. Mm -hmm. Like every other aspect of Christmas, the shocking truth is that even this supposed to be Christian Custom does not come from the Bible. What you say? I am not a Christian. <laughs> I am a citizen of the kingdom of the Most High God. Thank you, Most High God, for letting the scales fall off our eyes. Yes. It is an irony that people love to believe they are following the customs of of the wise men giving to Mashiach. When they actually, they are giving almost exclusively to each other. Oh, what hypocrisy. Mashiach is completely forgotten. Oh, Lord. The Bible actually teaches that Christians should not keep birthdays. Numerous scriptures make this principle clear. Oh, Lord. However, what if we went to a birthday party uh -huh. that had been prepared for you okay. and everybody gave gifts to each other and left you out? <laughs> what you say? The idea is ridiculous. Yeah. If this happened, you would say that people were being selfish and forgetting you. In fact, most people give to 
others on Christmas merely because they expect to receive a gift themselves. Uh -huh. And you know it's the truth. Let's briefly return to the wise men who gave gifts to Mashiach. Mm -hmm. The scripture describing this is Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Mm -hmm. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east, to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. Yeah. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. It is commonly supposed that these were birthday presents for baby Jesus. Y'all better stop it. But if, but is this what the Bible actually says? Absolutely not. First, it is important to note that they did give the gifts to Yeshua. They did not stand in his presence and exchange gifts among themselves to give them to others. Mm -hmm. The gifts were presented unto him. Also they arrived well after his birthday. Yep. This is another reason why these could not have been birthday presents. Ha, all right. A long standing ancient customs of the east. Was to present gifts when coming before a king. Yes. These men understood they were in the presence of the king of the Jews. The Bible carries many of people sending gifts to kings or presenting them upon arrival in their presence. Mm -hmm. This custom is common today when ambassadors or others come into the presence of a world leader. Finally, notice what the Adam Clark Commentary, Volume 5, page 46 states about what really happened on this occasion. Huh. All right. Verse 11. They presented unto him gifts. The people of the East never approached the presence of kings and great personage without a present in their hand. This custom is often noticed in the Old Testament and still prevails in the East and some of the newly discovered South Seas Islands. Gifts were customary presented to kings. What could be more plain? Origin of the Christmas tree, huh? Origin of the Christmas tree. No article about Christmas is complete without some explanation of the Christmas tree, huh? No article about Christmas is complete without some explanation of the Christmas tree. We have touched on it without directly focusing on it. The modern Christmas tree originated in Germany, but the Germans got it from the Romans, who got it from the Babylonians and the e Egyptians. What? Pagan? Idolatry? Worship? Babylon? What you say? The modern Christmas tree originated in Germany. Yeah. But the Germans got it from the Romans who got it from the Babylonians and the Egyptians. The following demonstrates what the Babylonians believe about the origin of the Christmas tree. An old Babylonian fable told of an evergreen tree which sprung out of a dead tree stump. Y'all better come on in here. See if that is see if she out there. An old Babylonian fable told of an evergreen tree which sprang out of a dead tree stump. The old stump symbolized the death, the dead Nimrod. What you say? The old stump symbolized the dead Nimrod. 
The new evergreen tree symbolized that Nimrod had come to life again in Tammu. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on in here. The new evergreen tree symbolized that Nimrod had come to life again in Tammu. Yeah. Among the Druids, the oak was sacred. Among the Egyptians, it was the palm. And in Rome, it was the fern, which was decorated with red berries during the Sanitania. What you say? Yeah. Oh, come on now. Frederick J. Huskin answered the question states, the Christmas tree is from Egypt and its origin dates from a period long anterior to the Christmas era. Did you know this? That the Christmas tree long preceded Christianity. Where you get your tree from? Most aspects of Christmas are not referred to in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The reason is that they are not from the most high God. They are not part of the way he wants people to worship him. Mm -hmm. The Christmas tree, however, is directly mentioned in the Bible. Oh my goodness. The Christmas tree, however, is directly mentioned in the Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 through 5. I'll wait. Because we're going to let the word establish the word. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 through 5. Thus says the Lord, uh -huh. learn not the way of the heathen. Yes. For the custom of the people are vain. Mm -hmm. For one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. Mm -hmm. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. That it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must need be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. This plain description. Of the modern Christmas tree is clear. Yeah. The most high God directly refers to it as the ways of the heathen. Mm -hmm. Just as directly he commands his people to learn not the way of the heathen. Calling these customs vain. In verse 23, as a remarkable and powerful statement. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his own steps. Yes. The most high God must teach people how to live. Man simply cannot figure out the most high God's ways for himself. Amen. There is no room in Jeremiah chapter 10 to believe, as some has tried to suggest, that because these trees are powerless of themselves, it is not really forbidden to have a Christmas tree. The Most High God condemns the putting up of a pagan Christmas tree with this plain Bible command. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Y'all right out there. Y'all right. Hallelujah. Glory to his name, April. We come to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me the Most High God. The source 
of the holy reefs, you logs and mistletoes. Uh-oh. The Encyclopedia of Pan Americana states, the holy, the mistletoe, the U log are replicas of pre-Christian time. In other words, paganism. The U log was commonly used in a rite of turning up nature worship. Mm -hmm. Frederick Huskin further states the use of Christmas wreaths is believed by authorities to be traceable to the pagan customs of decorating buildings and placing of worship at the feast which took place at the same time as Christmas. Yes. Mm. The Encyclopedia mm -hmm. Britannica under Celestials exposed the origin of holy wreaths. Europe pagans brought holy spray into their homes, offering them to the fairy people of the forest as refuge for the harsh winter weather. During the Santitalia, the Romans went to festival. Branches of hollies were exchanged as tokens of friendship. The earliest Roman Christians apparently used holies as a decoration at the Christmas season. There are dozens of different types of holies. Virtually all of them come in male and female varieties, huh. such as blue prince or blue princesses or blue boy and blue girl or china boy and china girl. Yeah. Female holy plants cannot have berries unless a nearby male plant pollinates them. It is easy to see why the holy reef found its way into pagan rituals as a token of friendship and fertility. Christmas is incomplete to many unless it involves kissing under the mistletoe. What you say? Christmas is incomplete to many unless it involves kissing under the mistletoe. Mm -hmm. This pagan custom was natural on a night that involved much rivalry done in the spirit of drunken orgies. Uh -oh. mm. Huh? Mm. Just like today. This kissing usually occurs at the beginning of any modern Sanitania Christmas celebration. Lord, have mercy. Mistletoe was considered to have special powers of healing for those who reveled under it. The Encyclopedia Britannica under Sanitalia states the the European mistletoe is thought to have had special ritual significance in druidical ceremonies in lives and folklores today. Its special status as the Christmas mistletoe having come from Anglo-Saxon time. Mistletoe is a parasite that lives on oak trees. Oh, Lord. The ancient Celtic used to give mistletoe as a herbal remedy to barren animals to make them fertile. It is still referred to as all healer in Celtic. Like mistletoe. Holy berries were also thought to be sacred to the sun god. The original sun log came to be called the Yule log. Yule simply means will, which has long been a pagan representation of the sun. No wonder people today commonly speak of the sacred Yule tide season. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. What should you do? All right. What you say, Mosai? Mm -hmm. What should
good you do. Finally, let's examine what the Most High God told his people they should do in the way they ought to teach their children. Yeah. All right now. Human beings do not want to obey the Most High God. Romans chapter 8 verse 7. They would rather follow their own imagination. They do not understand that the most high God wants their lives to go well. He wants happiness, joy, and blessings to flow into people's lives. Yeah. And these are the results of obeying him. The Most High God inspired Moses to warn parents of the grave responsibility that they have in what and how to teach their children. Yes. Notice his instructions in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 21. Drop down to 25. Huh. Now these are the commandments which the Lord your most high God commanded you to teach, to teach you that you might do them in the land where you go to possess it. All these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart and you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up and when your sons ask you in time to come saying, what means the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our most high God has commanded us? Then you shall say unto your son. We were Pharaoh's bondsmen in Egypt. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord, our most high God, as he has commanded us. The most high God took Israel out of Egypt out of the customs of the world around them and revealed his law to them. He does not want his people going back to the traditions, customs, and ways from which he called them from. When all of the interconnected traditions filled with the symbolism of worshiping an ancient pagan human devised God are taught this is not worshiping the true creator. The prophet Isaiah was inspired to write cry aloud spare not lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. I have done this. Amen, 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 and amen. Woo! So good. So, so good. Thank you, Most High God. So good. So, so good.
If I go astray, if I go astray, if I Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, Most High. What an awesome teaching. What? You know, I just wish, I just wish somebody would have taught me. You know, I'm just thankful that the Most High God will have us to bring the truth. I just wish somebody would have taught me. But we here now. And we are being held accountable. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Bless you, Doreen. Bless you, April. Bless you, Evelyn. Everyone that was on, Raynard, bless you. Oh, my goodness. Terrence, I saw you come in for a minute. Uh, everybody that came in today, bless you. First Lady Wilkins, bless you. I I'm just like, I am so amazed that the Most High God have us walking in truth. Hanukkah starts December 23rd through December the 30th. So happy Hanukkah is what we going to celebrate. Because guess what? We choose the most high God. We don't choose the way of the heathens. We're not going to walk in their ways. We're going to do the commandments of the most high God and not the commandments of men. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. Miss Evelyn, sister, I'm holding you up in prayer, praying for your mother, praying for your sister, praying for your niece at the most high God that will have everything in their life to line up that Raphael will bring complete healing to every last one of them and that we stand on his principles and that we continue to walk in his ways. So we know that it is already done. I walk in healing. And today is day three, divine intervention on all three of them. Amen, 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 and amen. Hallelujah. I love you, love you, love you. Ooh, Doreen, girl, I love you. I can't wait to the teaching tomorrow. We're going to keep on coming all the way up until we get to Hanukkah. We're going to tear all the lies of the enemies down because for surely we have inherited our forefathers lies by now so good